This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? This is the BYD Otto 3, and in this video, I'm going to review the interior. So, as you probably noticed, we are in Thailand now. So the, the setup is slightly different, but the review should still be more or less the same. The reviewer is the same as the old one. So, yes, um, I also brought the the Cybex stuff here. We have Cybex e -Priam and also Cybex Cloud Set we're going to test in the car. This is actually from Norway, and we're going to keep it here permanently. So we'll see how that fits. How good of a family car is the Atto 3? Well, we will see, I guess. I think we should start with the front first. How do you do with the Chinese cars? Oh no, there's... Okay, okay, all right. Whoa, this thing is heavy. Oh, Chinese steel. Oh. What the heck? There is so much space in... Wait. BYD is pure EV platform, isn't it? Why do they have so much leftover space here? Man, just look here. You know, an electric drivetrain doesn't take up that much space, even though this is front-wheel drive. You see the motor is mounted down there. I guess the motor and the inverter is probably connected uh, close together. Uh, high voltage in... Okay, okay, yeah, it could be that one. And then this one says powertrain domain controller. At least it's easy to access the, the washer fluid here. So that's, uh, that's nice. Other than that, hmm... Okay, maybe someone, some smart people could make a third party uh, frunk, some kind of plastic uh, thing you can place in here, but you have to figure out where you can put some weight, some load on the, on here. Maybe, I don't know if you can mount it towards the edge or something, but something that can load maybe, let's just say, maximum five kilograms for a bag or something like that. That could be very useful because there, okay, maybe you shouldn't interfere with this area. Actually, does it matter? Yeah. Maybe there's getting some passive cooling from that side. No, no, this is liquid cool. It has to be liquid cool anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Now you see under the hood. We could have. We could have probably spared, if they packed it better. We. They could have spared, freed up, let's say, five, ten centimeters in the cabin, like an MBB platform, like an ID4, for example. And despite that this is a, an affordable EV, we actually have motorized liftgate, huh? The Chinese cars are catching up when it comes to premium features. So, but let me see. But let me see. Do, we don't have any kick sensor. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's premium or luxury. But at least motorized liftgate. Wait, can you adjust it? If you do this, hold it down. Oh, it gave me a little back feedback. Back up. Okay, let me see. It should remember that one. You see, stuff like this is quite intuitive, and you don't need to read the manual. Read men never reads manual. You see? And then you just go further up. Just like in a Tesla, I learned this from Tesla. And then it works the same as other cars. And here we have the sugar cable in a nice little bag. And then here. <laughs> yes, just like other Chinese cars, we have vehicle to load adapter with an extension. Well, Use in dry condition only. Okay, well, not suitable for bargain then. Okay, but at least they have vehicle to load. You see, very common for Chinese cars nowadays to have vehicle to load. I hope the Western cars will follow up, like the German auto, uh, German auto industry and Tesla. Why not? Okay, let's see now. And then under here, oh, there's a lid where you can... Wow, I see banana box now, a banana box test. But you take the lid and then can you take out this one? Oh, it's kind of fixed here, but we have tire repair kit. We have some high visibility jackets. We have warning triangle. Oh, ooh, very nice. Uh, this is the one for removing the, the nuts cover. And then in a nice plastic bag, they have, I present you, what the heck is this thing? It's actually quite small, but I think that's the whole point because it's freaking Asian size. Trunk looks kind of basic though. Just hard plastic, we have one light there, and as a true Asian, you always keep the plastic protection on until the day you sell the car. And then here we have some pockets, I like it, with some uh, strap on there, there on the side. Oh yeah, you can put some cables and stuff there. Uh, but uh, I'm missing some 12 volt outlet here. Hmm. And what else? Yeah. And also, I also don't see any hooks for securing cargo. 
So yeah, they still have a little bit of more cop copying, I mean, catching up to do. And here we have the Cybex e -Prion. We've been using it for seven months so far. Yeah, wow, time flies. Isabel is seven months old now. So uh, yes, we have the, the e -Prion frame, but I don't know if you guys remember, we used to have that other one, that big, that's, that's called Caricot. It actually takes a lot of space. But up until uh, the baby is six months old, we use that one. So over here in Thailand, we use this one. It's called Seat Pack. It's smaller. The baby is supposed to sit more upright and stuff. Well, it, we can adjust it. But okay, let's uh, disassemble this and try to fit it in the trunk. Now let's see. The challenge is always to try to fit the EPM base without taking off the wheel here. I can show you that in case you have to in some cars, you have to take off the wheel here. And then you can usually fit it in actually most cars. I have never encountered a car I could not fit the, the EPRAM base in. But with this one, I can show you that it actually fits, but it seems to not have that width that some other similar sized cars have. So this is kind of, okay, I mean, it kind of fits there, but then I think the trick is that you have to lift up a little bit and then suddenly it goes kind of flat, but it's not too too important for me now anymore since I'm, I have just this small one here. You see, this is the seat pack, way smaller than the carry cot. Uh, but also maybe, wait, maybe also not too critical for the up to three because you have so much height here. So even if you load a little bit, you don't have to pack it optimally and then it should still close. Let me check here. Does the trunk close? That is always the banana box test. You see, it passed. So this is very good. And also we can see that we still have a lot of space here. And in case you need to put more stuff here, you can always take off the wheel and then optimize it for even, uh, so, it, so it takes even less space. So this is actually really good. Ding! And in the back seat, look here. Isofix mounting points, really easy accessible. This is heaven for me as a daddy. It's super easy to mount and unmount uh, the, the Isofix base here. But not only that, I will show you if this matters. Look here. Also, Isofix point in the front. Huh? I've seen this only in uh, some German cars and then the Swedish cars like Volvo and Polestar. They have it in the front. So this is really useful. Wait, does mean, yeah, yeah, there's a switch for switching off the airbag. Wow, super convenient. And then let me show you how easy it is to mount the Isofix base in this car. Just took it in, extend the hooks, and then, wow, this is, man, it's like stealing candy from a baby. That's it. <laughs> wow. And then just adjust this one. Until it becomes green. Well, this one is kaput uh, after the transportation to Thailand. But that's it. And then we try to take the <coughs> cloud set. Of course, this is not with weight. With weight, it will be harder, but uh, you can see that we have plenty of space here. Just click it in. And also the, the door opens quite wide. So super easy. And now let's do the measurements. So unfortunately, I didn't bring the Bosch laser can, but I'm planning on buying one over here. But for now, we're going to use this tape measuring tool. So yes, let's see. Uh, where do we measure first? Okay, let's see. How deep is your trunk? Well, depends how you measure it, right? Uh, just like your penis. Uh, it's, uh, oh, it's only 75 centimeters. That's kind of shallow. 75, let's see here, this one. Okay, wait, I have to figure out how, you know, you know how to use a measuring tape? You can do an inside measuring like this. And then when you see 20 centimeters, you just add the length here and then it becomes, yeah, I don't know how much this is. Normally it will tell you how big the measuring tape is. This one, I'm not sure. I have to figure it out. All right, it's six centimeters. Let's see. See if I do an, an in lie inside measurement, we get uh, 89 plus six. So that's 95 centimeters. This is exactly what I've been saying because uh, many other cars, they will have roughly hundred centimeters. You get that extra five centimeters that makes it better. That's what she said. Um, and then, okay, let's do the height here. Again, doing the inside measurement, 76 plus uh, six, that's 82 centimeters. Wow, you see that? We have plenty of height here, that's good. And then for some people, it matters what the opening is. That's uh, 79 centimeters. And then the loading height, ooh, there is actually quite a, 
a big edge here around 15 centimeters down here but that's because we have raised the, the floor you can also i mean you, we are lower the floor sorry you can also raise the floor but okay what about the loading height here oh around uh, 77 centimeters and then let's see if you fold the seats how big will it be then wow this seems quite spacious so i will show you that this you can take it up the seat falls relatively flat not completely flat and then let's see so i guess we can measure that distance which is uh this the passenger seat has been uh, pushed all the way forward and in case you have to put something big here wow almost to i'd say 198 centimeters that is very good and then here behind the driver's seat then you get 172 centimeters and then diagonally you see this is actually slightly better than the laser cannon because it's it's clearer what i'm measuring what oh shit except for that this shit happens okay here i have to do an inline measurement roughly there uh 200 and whoa 216 centimeters wow so this is actually a very spacious car indeed and now let's measure the back seat so i will estimate roughly the width of the seat whoa this is a lot 133 centimeters in the back seat wow and also one other thing that is important for the comfort in the back seat is how high is this one so let's see so we just do this right and we see that it is around 35 centimeters that actually gives the passenger in the back pretty good comfort yeah you don't sit like this you sit more like this good well when it comes to the interior design uh, this is quite unusual the door handle is here the speaker is there and the speaker is there so let's show you here open like this <laughs> but at least the door whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, me, let me test let me close the other door here well at least the door closing sound that, wow wow that kind of deep wow that that sounds good that sounds good and also here soft hard, hard not soft ish so at least the, the surfaces you touch they are soft i like it you just have to kind of embrace this design here look at this this is supposed to resemble some uh, Chinese instrument. Some people hate it, some people love it. Me, I'm like, meh, well, okay, whatever. All right, and then we have some pockets here. We have air vents here. <laughs> yeah, funky design, right? Yeah, air vents, you, you, you increase it like this, and then, wait, wait, how is it again? No, no. This, this one, you, you close it, yeah, and then you add more air here. At least we have one USB-A and one USB-C. We have some pockets there. And I can show that the, the seat belt here can be adjusted up and down. That's very nice. And then I guess compared to ZS EV, which is also available in the market in Thailand, ZS EV only has cabin lights in the front, but not in the back. Here we have cabin lights also in the back. And we have handles here, coat hook. You see, this seems to be a very well-featured car. And also we have sunroof that can be open also if you want to so and i can show you the seats the seats here they are relatively flat okay so not the nice side bolts as you would expect so not too sporty but at least it's actually better for if i put car seat here i actually want flat seats for car seat uh, placement and then here we have uh, some kind of center console armrest with cup holders here no table here anything no ski opening that's a bummer but that's probably because they don't have snow in china maybe they don't go skiing over there but okay wait, when i said flat seat okay the seats are flat but at least the sides here they have some some side bolsters so actually when i sit in a seat it feels nice and comfy we can adjust this one up let me close the door a little bit but when it comes to headroom this is not great I'm still 173 centimeters. I'm just talking about two fingers of clearance. That's it. So 
I actually feels a bit cramped for an for a crossover. I'm, I'm not sure if I should call it an SUV. I think it's a crossover, but I think it's mainly because we have good uh, seating height that eats up some space here. But for me though, it's okay. But that should mean that the middle seat should be better, right? Well, actually the middle seat depends how you sit, but then you also rub into this, this edge here. Unless you lean forward, I guess. If you lean forward, then suddenly you have plenty of space but okay at least what is kind of important is that here you see we have flat floor because this is pure ev design the passenger seat is also electric and here we have this bridge design so you have a nice pocket here under so you can put some stuff and we also have usb c usb a and some micro sd what is this we take it out huh it actually has a micro SD. Oh, this is probably for, uh, yeah, for dash cam because it actually has a dash cam feature. And I think there's a camera here that can record stuff. And the front seat, we have electric adjustable seats, but no memory buttons. Hmm, unless you can set it inside here, I'm not sure, but I haven't found any profile settings there. And then the steering wheel can be adjusted up and down but also in and out, ooh, very nice. And then the sun visor here can pivot, but it doesn't extend. Okay, here we have some standard buttons for adjusting stuff. And then here we also have a button for opening the trunk, and then we can also play. I wonder if you can tune, you can, you can adjust the, the tone correctly so you get the right the right frequencies <laughs> okay door closing sound wow that is very nice indeed okay let me just open here a little bit so uh here you see like whoa what the heck is this uh wait a minute so when you adjust the steering wheel the instrument cluster follows the steering wheel wait where have we seen this design before Hmm, ID3, ID4. And then if you look in the back, uh, you see that that design resembles the ID3. <laughs> well, it's a Chinese car after all. They tend to copy stuff. But yeah, okay. So I can show that here we see percents of the chart. We see range. This is, I guess, NEDC because it's not even damn close. And it seems to not adjust to my driving style. So no, you, no, you don't get 408 kilometers at 85%. You get more like uh, 300, maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay, there's some numbers. We, uh, this is also Chinese. Chinese. What am I saying? Chinese car tends to show you kilowatt power output. I actually like it. We have clock here. This is uh, uh, recuperation. So if you look here, we have a button for recuperation, and also a button for drive mode here. I can show you that uh, this one is either a standard or high, and even high is not that strong really. And then here we have uh, eco mode, sport, and then I guess you cycle between them. And they just tend to use normal mode, that's it. And then we have, yeah, also a trip, it's a little bit, uh, just like I guess in the BYD Tang, you have the trip here, and there's a button here you have to use. And you press this one and you cycle between odometer, trip A or trip B, and then you can reset trip B by holding it, and then you reset this one. And then uh, maybe I have to close the door, but, uh, you also have, once you start driving, you will have some more information here. But yeah, you see this one about driving. Uh, it's, uh, you have some buttons here for changing following the incidents, but it doesn't work now for some reason. Yeah, uh, we have cruise control buttons here. We have auto steer. Oh, let me change the, as you see better here. Uh, this one, uh, this one is for parking assist uh, 360 camera. Really nice and sharp compared to ZS EV. The ZS EV has shitty resolution compared to this one. This is tack sharp. What you expect for a 2023, 2022 car, right? Um, 360 camera, and then if it, yeah, you can also close this one. But also, if you put the car in reverse, it will automatically come up, and then it stays on when you go forward. You would then switch between the, see the rear and the front. So this is also super convenient. You can of course use this button, but and almost never use it. And also another feature, by the way, is that um, I noticed that when you're just driving, normally when this one is not up, right, like this. 
if you get close to an edge, uh, I'm not going to show it, you have to be kind of close, then the proximity sensor senses that you get close to an edge, and then suddenly you get this 360 view up, but then I think you get some like, like this one, yeah. And then it will show you that, okay, we are close to the edge. How close to the edge are you, really? So very, very nice, really, the way they have implemented this stuff, man. And then here, this is the most pointless feature ever. You can rotate the screen. Yeah, what is the point? Well, I think that that's the whole point. It's pointless, and that's the whole point. I always have it in landscape because I think it's easiest for me to have this one because my eyes are horizontal my eyes are not vertical <laughs> yeah all right and then yeah we have some scroll wheel buttons here uh well, okay this one will change the media stuff here see that and then uh you have some more if you want to change well i'm in drive now okay let me uh, okay this is also kind of a little bit unusual so you you go drive like this you go reverse like this but then park is here uh, but then when you want to change gear you have to press this kind of you see, if you do this, it doesn't happen. You have to kind of hold it. I guess this is kind of like, yeah, it's like a safety feature. So you don't accidentally bump into this and enter drive. So at least that's good. But uh, I want to show you that here. Let me see. Can I switch if I do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do this and then you can see driving time. And this is 9.6 hours. It's decimal. So it's actually, it goes to 9.9 .9 hours and then it goes to 10 hours. And then if you press, if you press this button here, you can then use the scroll wheel here. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that you can change some some uh, variables. Uh, you can see driving time, you can see average speed, scroll up, and then you see nothing, or then you see uh, the car status. That's nice. You can also change which units you wanna use here. Um, and then this is total average since factory in China. And then this one is past 50 kilometers. This is the, the thing I don't like about Chinese car is that it shows you consumption in the past 50 kilometers only, and then it goes default back there. Wait, 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 what happened there? Do, do, do. I was just looking, yeah, and then we have acceleration timer. Oh, what the heck is this thing, right? And then we're back to learning time. But, but I will show you that here, if you go here, uh, let me see if I can find this. It's like a little, uh, um, was it a new energy? Yeah, yeah, here. Uh, under consumption here, you also have the cumulative uh, mile, uh, the, the, the odometer. And then you have the, this one, the same one you have on the other screen. But here you see you have a trip meter. So it actually calculates, it, it, uh, it tracks the, the time and the average speed since you reset it, but there is no average consumption. So why, why, why not? <laughs> and here, I guess it takes some time to uh, get used to the whole in interface here, but at least what is uh, cool is that you see here, the PM 2.5 levels inside it's seven, outside it's 53. That is actually plausible, 52, 53. Well, let me check. Is this correct? 54? Is it really that high? Let me go check here. I have a PM meter just sitting around in front of the house here. Yo, yo, what's up? Ah, okay. Well, it's, yeah, it's a slightly different location, but yeah, it should be uh, correct, right? Okay, let's go back to the car. That's uh, Amber's dad uh, watering some uh, plants. And then, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but the steering wheel is, uh, is on the right side which is the wrong side, should have been left side with the right side. Okay, back here, boom. Yeah, but okay, what was I showing again? Yeah, um, so yeah, and then we have here, elevation is always visible here, I like it, and also the angle here. Well, how was it, how was it with the BYD Tang again? But this one is pretty cool, and then the, 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 actually this is the angle in, in degrees, okay? So it means that you can be in any screen. Okay, let me just home. You can be in the music and you still see that information. You don't have to be in the navigation to see it. I like it. With this, our oh, Bluetooth, oh, okay, okay. So lots of stuff to show you here maybe, but uh, it, the video will be too long. Let me show you the rest of the interior. Here we have air vents again. Like what the heck? Uh, we have wireless charging pad here. And then uh, we have some setting, we have some mode and stuff here. Uh, we have cup holder. You, you can go into the deep mode or the shallow mode, which one do you like? But it doesn't have that adjustable thing that you have in some of the other Chinese cars. And here, the center room here is quite big. Yeah, I have I have some RFID stuff here. Oh, that's there for the key, yeah. So this one is, not only is it quite big, uh, but I can show you that there is like an, an extra room here, under here, I don't know. 
you can see that it disappears under here. So I can, maybe I can fist that's better to demonstrate. You see here how my fist goes, it just disappears there. So I like it. It's actually relatively spacious. There you go. And then show the rest of the interior. Here we have button to open and close the sunroof. Let me see how is this again. You to swipe, right? Wait, you swipe. There, there, there. You swipe it to open the sunroof. But I'll show another feature. You can also do this. Swipe down here. And then here you can also customize it. Lots of uh, settings, but then some of these might be a little bit pointless since you already have some of the some of the settings. I mean, some of the buttons available here. So, but at least um, where was it? Again? So, so swipe down. Here we also have this top window, which seems to be only available in this menu because I haven't found it when you look through the other menus. But here it's like Tesla style. You see. Yeah, huh, huh, huh? Yeah, yeah, you like that? Wait, is that 48%? Wait, is that 48%? It doesn't look like 48% to me. That seems like it opened only 20%. Uh, Chinese software, maybe? Wait, how about 100% then? Okay, okay, is that the, okay? 100% oh, is there. All right, okay, let me see. What if I do 50%? There. Will it close kind of 50%? No, 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 that, what the heck? It's not linear. <laughs> okay, it's the stuff that kind of triggers my OCD if it's not linear, <laughs> but whatever. But I will also show you another kind of uh, annoying feature is that inside light. Yeah, the inside light. This is the inside light. But um, you have on and then it kind of goes away like this. So this is also a weird user interface. You see, you turn it on, but you have to assign another button for off. Now you turn off the light. Why? Why can't this be a toggle? Because first I only assign the inside on, right? And then I pressed it. I pressed it several times to turn it off. I was like, huh? It's buggy. It doesn't turn off. Well, you have to. Yeah. Ugh. So that's actually a little bummer. But okay, let me go to something more important. The headroom here. How is the headroom? Oh, shit. Again, the problem is that... I'm going to show you maybe, yeah, yeah, this is better to show you like this. The problem is that this edge here is not extended all the way here. How was this with the Tesla again? I don't remember. But you see, this is the problem. So even for me, I'm still 173 centimeters. We don't even have a fist here. We have maybe two or three fingers of clearance. That's it. Because this beam is in the way. It would be nice. Well, you can, you can drive like this, I guess. <laughs> then you have two fists of clearance here. Yeah, that, that's the way, a pro tip for me. Man, I need to shave my armpits. <laughs> but let me show you that. Okay, more stuff, more goodies. Here, we actually have makeup light and, yeah, makeup mirror. So that's nice. Not every car has it, but one thing I don't like, now, now we are nitpicking, the temperature here and the temperature here is too high. It's like, uh, I don't know, 4,500 Kelvin or something, or maybe more, more than like 5,000 Kelvin. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, 5,000, 6,000 Kelvin. I prefer 4,200 Kelvin. That gives you the nice warm temperature, but that, that's just nitpicking. Other than that, I think we have covered most of the car now. So here you have it, the BYD Auto 3. Do I think it's nice? Yes, it's actually a very nice car. It has cool features, convenient, comfortable and uh, very useful also some of the features so but how does it compete against all the other european cars well then i'm not sure but i guess now you guys have seen how it is uh, but at least it seems to be a very good car i have spent a lot of time also driving it and it also rides well uh, there will be another video where i explain more about that one but the features of this, this, this car is actually right on par or maybe even above some of the western cars so I guess it boils down to what you guys prefer then. So that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.